Kiwi Kid? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't even like energy, it was just like, Kiwi Kid, 1v5. All right. <laughs> So, uh, you know, fun to hear the fans. Yeah, Kiwi, you know, big name, of course, here in the North American LCS. And, hey, he's actually played the most games he possibly can because he brought it to game three. I mean, he's going to keep that remix going. Veteran. I know, right? Guess so. Massive stuff from him. So here we go into the final game of picks and bans. Envy back on the blue side. I want to see how these adaptations go. Proxen's still not going to get that in Italy. Still no rise allowed. And, yeah, Envy realized, you know that Zyra ban we brought out in game one? Should probably bring that back. Yeah, and... The one thing I have to say, if you're going to keep Rise on the table, uh, you know, Jad, the guys at the desk are saying, ban away the Vladimir. you got to ban Vladimir. If you do that, you're leaving Swain open, which is what they have banned uh, every game. They obviously could try to pick it away as well. They do have first pick, so they do have those options. Um, but if they want to ban it, they are going to be leaving that Swain open. Well, maybe they will. They'd always choose to ban it not first, but slightly later on in their ban order. I like to believe the teams are smart about their ban order and that you, you try to surprise people later on in the draft. But... Now that ban is still going to be swaying after all. Yeah, so probably going to be looking to take Vladimir first. Uh, and it's going to be Kindred taken off the table. Once again, it's going to be kind of, if you take one off, you have to take two off. That's been at least the thought process. Whether or not it's it's true is something that will flesh out more over the course of the seasons. We play right. more and more games. Uh, but for now, that really has been the standard across all regions. And the question is, which roles are worth pitching here? Kindred obviously would have been the jungle pitch if not for the ban coming out here. It's There's still Lucian, who's arguably at the top of the table. Assuming that game was closed out. Yeah, hey, look, early game Lucian yeah. crushed it. No surprise there. So, Got to uh, feel like you're scared of the Vladimir, though. And if if this is I agree. Ninja wants to play, I, I would like to see him him take that. You know, it's also, theoretically, you can put a top lane as well. You know, I'm not sure if it's Seraph's style, really. It um, but it is, is a flex pick, right? I mean, this guy was like a Nidalee and Jace main back in the day. Yeah. Like, if you play those champions, you played Vladimir, too. And there's a lock-in right there. Yeah, good call on that one. I think it's no surprise, really. Envy had to go for that one. Calm, cool, and collected faces, though, on energy. You kind of had to assume at some point that first pick was coming through. Say, so, all right, you can take that one, but... Here's what's up. It's also something that kind of forces the hand of energy a little bit because they don't want to give Lucian for free to Laud. So even if you don't really want to play it, like maybe it's not your favorite, you'd rather play Kaelin or Ezreal, you almost have to pick it because giving it second round away, I feel like is kind of a pretty bad yeah. situation when when it's something that uh, MV has been prioritizing really highly. Laud obviously loves that Lucian, uh, likes the new build. And if you're just going to give that away to him for free, second round, that's got to be a steal for him. Yeah, I totally agree. And back in like 6.8, I didn't think Lucian was that insane. And I yeah. thought you were okay picking something else instead of it, mostly Sivir. Mm -hmm. uh, but since people sort of discovered the Black Cleaver build and it got buffed as of yeah. 6.9 or so, I think, yeah, Lucian's top dog as far as AD carry is concerned does get grabbed up. Santorin actually wanted to grab that Rek'Sai here. And you can see huh. what people sort of perceive the pecking order to be in literally Kindred. Rek'Sai's next up. I've got to say, though, I actually really liked him on the Gragas. Me too. Uh, I, I felt like it gave him like a lot of explosive playmaking. Especially if you are going to be playing towards the late game, uh, Gragas late game is so much more valuable simply because you have the displacement. You can't put like a, a numerical value on displacement because that can win you a game single handedly. It can win you a fight. Whereas the Rek'Sai late game, you're basically just your W. Yeah, and honestly, your late game's not even that good in general, right? Yeah. So, like, Lucian and Rek'Sai both, I think, are champions that tend to fall off later on into the game, unless you play, like, full shrimp style, where you split push and have the highest gold in the game. Yeah. Probably not the case here. And look at this, Envy actually playing a bit more backline focus. Like, yes, Vladimir's going to dive in, but you're seeing a Marksman jungle get grabbed right here, we assume, and, and a Braum, which is usually there to protect a backline. So, uh, it's it's sort of about the, the high-profile damage dealers from behind a tank wall right now for Envy. Yeah, it's also something where... Graves traditionally can outfarm their Rek'Sai kind of hard. We've seen this in uh, a number of games that I've been watching on this patch. And if Graves is able to really get that, that early farm lead, he can get aggressive, he can bully out the Rek'Sai, especially if Rek'Sai is going to be going for the sight zone, going for those you know non-combat stats, Graves can really get it in his face and just push him around. Yeah, I agree right here. So energy now, I think they have to... Even though Graves can outform, I think they still have to kind of think about that early game yeah. pretty heavily here. Lucian will get outscaled by almost every other AD carry, especially because of his build order. He's not going to get that 70-80% crit build. And you're against a Vladimir. We saw what a 60-minute Vladimir can do. And unless you think Ninja's not going to play it even close to as well as GBM, you've got to give that a lot of respect. Right now, looking at champions that can go in. The Maokai three games in a row for Quas going to keep playing that champion. But Kiwi could actually switch it over to a Janna here, something that can definitely give you some lane phase pressure. But uh, you kind of hope that the, the mid game keeps going well on top of that one just for the attack damage buff. I also do think that 
it can kind of enable Lucian to, to carry on into the late game a lot better because it enables you to play more aggressively. John has fantastic peeling. You get the bonus AD from uh, the shield. And when you're super late game, you're getting a fair bit of AD from the AP ratio on it. Uh, so it does enable Lucian to kind of compete with some of those late game carries that would otherwise outclass him. That's true. So yeah, more stats always nice for your late game scaling as he pushes forward. Envy now to lock in their roster for their final game of their first match here. Tied one to one against energy. You can see those big ones at the top of the screen. It's because of each one one game in this best of three here. And this is the one that decides who ends their day in the first ones. place. It is. And it's going to be the Caitlyn picked up. So, yep, there's the big backline, but also the Lissandra's back in the mix here for Ninja, which does mean it's a top lane Vlad for Seraph, which means it's only one real tank, and that's Braum. Against Gangplank for GBM, by wow. the way. And GBM is known for his gangplank. Uh, this is something that this guy was famous for in Korea. He was an amazing player on it on, in the LCK, and we haven't seen it as much lately, uh, but I'm very excited to see it. I also think that it matches up pretty well against Lissandra because um, you're done. Orange w, out of the ulti. Yeah, you can just orange out of the ulti. I don't know. It's, it removes scurvy, I think it's called. Yeah, remove scurvy. Okay. Yep. So you can, you can actually pop out of that. And as far as lane matchups go, they're looking pretty good for energy. The only thing is uh, Vlad is going to be a problem for Maokai. And if you fall behind this game as Maokai, as much as you did last game to Echo, the game is going to get really out of control. So yeah. Quas has to stay relevant. He has to keep pace uh, with Seraph. And Seraph also is locking in the Ghost, which is an interesting adaptation. Oh, interesting stuff here. Yeah, if he keeps that one, uh, Ghost got buffed. And as of 6.10, it was down to a three-minute cooldown. The movement speed scales with levels, so it goes up to like 40% yeah. or something really high by late game, and he's going to get around that map, and it's going to be up to this one. This is the tiebreaker. This is the game that determines which team wins the match here in game three. The rest almost don't matter at that point. So one more time, open up Twitter, whether it's a, a web page, whether it's your phone, do whatever, and tweet us. Let us know who it's going to be. Hashtag NV win. Hashtag NRG win. Who's it going to be for game three? Seraph got his Vladimir Lasano's back in, but GBM got his gangplank, and it's all down to this. Who's carrying harder? Who's going to win this one and maybe can energy survive it early game from envy seraph with another cool mastery pick he's saying screw the meta i'm going wind speakers and he's or not wind speakers uh storm raider search storm raider. My mistake. okay so he has storm raider search he has uh ghosts so he's all about the speed um i'm imagining he still has insight if you pick up insight you pick up early lucidity boots you have very low cooldowns on your ghost on your tp uh 30 off those summoner spells which is awesome uh and having that storm raider surge as long as he can actually get that to proc he can have ghost you can have both the move speed going during your w where yeah. you can't actually be slowed down and you will be ridiculously fast as far as chasing down people staying on top of them and really accessing that back line yeah his ghost is on a two and a half minute cooldown yeah. now 153 seconds definitely pretty insight. quick yep yeah and when you add lucidity on top of that it's even better but um Kid, kind of in an awkward spot. He gets tagged by Braum. He could be in some trouble here. Braum Q hit up. Looks like Ice a bit better than Wind, but he will get away without having to burn any summoners. Ten gold goes over to Hakuho for a Bandit. Nice job. Good duck. But Kiwi Kid going to recall back. I don't think he lost any potions or anything. And actually, Hakuho going to stop the recall. But there's still plenty of time. Minion's going to spawn in two seconds. And Kiwi Kid can walk in a lane in time to not miss anything. Shouldn't be too bad. And if he didn't, if he wasn't actually paying attention, if you get caught window shopping there, Ignite yeah. might actually kill you if you don't shield that Q. So, uh, well played by him. And he is going to be able to be A OK. -okay. Yeah. It's looking like we're going to have a standard lane matchups once again. Seraph is looking like he's going to be the one helping to leash here for Proxen. And I'm really excited to see how things flesh out here for Seraph. Haven't seen Vladimir in the top lane in professional play myself just yet. So, should be very interesting. Yeah, we are going to have matched lanes right here. And once again, it's Envy actually taking the Krugs themselves. Braum plus Caitlyn taking them down. And it looks like actually Hakuho was not allowed to get any of the experience. Of course, you can't share XP. You have to last hit to get them as of the new changes. And also, they're worth less total experience here. So Hakuho, uh, he's actually going to miss XP on none of them. Wow, the wow. melees are all still alive. So he's on pace. And Lod, already level 2. Yeah, and one of the advantages is because Kiwi Kid had to base, they didn't actually have a chance to do their own camp. So that is something that they did gain from poking him out. Uh, Caitlyn, I definitely favor over Lucian in the early game, but Jonna is going to be pretty useful in these trades, and it should be a better lane for energy overall because of the Jonna, I feel. I agree. I think that tilts the matchup more than it would otherwise. Yeah. So things to watch out for. How will Hakuho play the matchup? Level 2 here first for energy. They pushed a bit faster, but that melee minion should be level 2 for Hakuho. Assuming he didn't miss anything. 
He'll have it, and it's not going to be a big deal. Yeah, there it is. Nice job eating the traps from out of range of Lot. Here's the first attempt at a gank. The flash oh. comes in, gets a bit of a knockup, but Ninja getting away in time, even with Santorin burning his own flash. So that gank meant nothing. Yeah, Santorin was a split second too late. If he actually popped him up, you know, a fraction of a second earlier, it would have stopped the claw from going through, which would have cost at least the flash from Ninja, Ninja, if not his life. Absolutely the case. So unlucky there by Santorin, as you would say online, but that's just the case right here and lost some of his early time and his early summoner spell. Get the back eventually. Seraph, 150 magic damage with that rank two Q so far. And otherwise feeling pretty happy about this lane matchup. The way that he's manipulating the wave is actually really smart as well. Seraph is holding it very aggressively using uh, his Q's kind of drain tank this. He's trying to keep it away from the turret as long as possible, but Quas does get it there. If he wasn't able to, he's basically tapped on mana and he wouldn't have been able to base. So uh, getting that base off early is really important for Maokai in a matchup like this. You're going to need to go double Doran's aggressive early type items to even keep up with the Vlad. You have to be able to clear, you have to be able to shove in the waves or you're going to get smashed. And you can see some nice clinic right there from Seraph on how to last hit under turret because of the way the E works now. You can just quick double tap that and explode it and it's going to put your casters right at the spot where, hold on, GBM taking a lot of damage. He's going to live. But yeah, if you double tap the E, Seraph can basically set these casters up so that one hit from the turret, then an auto attack from Vlad last hits them. And as the minions start aggroing up, you delay it and you auto Q. And overall, just good mechanics by Seraph. Yep, that is the flash for GBM, but seeing that Ninja is actually completely oom, I think the GBM is like, yeah, even if even if we do see the jungler come back, I'm probably okay. So I think he is right for now, uh, but he does have to be worried about those return ganks. Definitely scary stuff here. We're seeing actually just a more aggressive game than we had seen before as well. That These junglers really quite active trying to make these things happen, trying to break the lanes apart. And, well, when you've got hard CC in these lanes, it's... No big surprise, Proxen. Nice steal away. And Centaur says, wait a second, there's no Raptors there. I need to go somewhere else. Hey, that's mine. How dare you? So GBM is sitting pretty. He's able to get the, the first blue buff as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, because Rek'Sai doesn't require that, they actually donated that first one over to him. And that's going to allow him to just spam his spells out without any worry about mana. And being able to just kind of orange on cooldown is going to keep him a bit more healthy in lane. So yeah, uh, he also did start basically the super greedy build uh, where he does have just that, that mana crystal right away you can build quicker into that Trinity Force. So we can see the lanes match up right now. Plus two is the lead for energy and that's after the double Krugs were killed from Envy. So uh, even a better lead than you would see from the numbers actually. Yep. As Envy cheats slightly. Gold overall actually though, 400 in favor of Envy. You can see a decent sized lead in the mid lane and also a reasonable one in the jungle. So. Yeah, the jungle is, is going to be something that we have to just have to track, especially because Proxen has gone the red smite. He's going aggressive. Uh, we do actually see a pretty aggressive smite here on Santorin as well. So both these junglers want to ramp up aggression. We have the chilling smite, which really enables uh, the early game ganks for that Rek'Sai. It's, it's a fantastic pickup if you're saying we need to get something done early. And they have good gank assist, you know, with Boss. So maybe try to do something on Seraph and it could help in those sort of matchups. Right. I mean, part of it's like why you pick Rek'Sai in the first place. Yeah. She's one of the very best early game junglers, honestly. So you've got, you're a, you're a form swapper, right? You've got basically two abilities per skill slot. So three, six, you've got more spells than everyone else. And in general, you tunnel forward on someone, you chilling smite them, you're guaranteed to reach them at that point for the knockup. And we'll see if Santorin can make gank pressure happen. That's kind of the reason for his champion. This Prox will otherwise tend to outscale on this Graves, especially with Red Smite. He's going to be hard to kill. Yeah, and it, it is a pretty big investment in the early game to go is because he's not going to be providing vision for his team. So he must provide ganks. He must provide... Uh, kind of just himself as a moving ward. He has to be able to be aggressive, move around the map, and actually compete with this Graves. Because if you're not going to be warding, if you're not going to be going that full-on support build, you have to do it uh, through the pressure of ganking and of dueling that other jungler. Yeah, definitely agree. So we'll see if that finally comes out from him. Ninja has Flash, though, and well, every lane that has a movement summoner has it available. It's Ghost for Seraph in this case. But it's Proxen who's actually spending more effort here. You can see him running forward on this one. Nice last hit by Ninja, prevents the barrel. And GBM says, I am in a bit of danger. Considered recalling back. Now you can see actually a staggered recall as OQ. Actually, just the team split across, but they're trying to deny him a little bit here off these minions. Mm -hmm. And GBM has got to be a little bit annoyed, getting a lot of attention here from Proxen early, and he's already getting pushed in. So now finally Santorin is going to come over, try to give his mid laner a little bit of help, because you don't want to let them just get this much free poke on your mid lane turret. Uh, that's one of the nice advantages of having a ranged jungler in the early game, is that you can just show up to a lane and help push. 
They definitely can, but right now we're seeing the top winners fight back and forth. It's close to equal though. Seraph will basically tie the score with Boss when this happens, but the mid lane is minus 15, and it's Proxen pushing Santorin around the map as well. Both these players level 6, you heard the farm alarm earlier. As we're slowly just seeing small leads in various matchups, the jungle and, uh, well, most of the mid lane now, I guess, for Envy. But yet again, this team has the slight early game lead, 300 right now, but every single game in the series, they've had the early game lead. Yep. Quas has done pretty well for himself so far, though. Uh, I think he's playing the matchup pretty well. As far as early game goes, Vlad's clear, cannot really compete with the Maokai. The Maokai can outpush the Vladimir before he gets uh, a lot more ranks in those spells. So he's playing it smart. He gets the early Dorans, invests into that, is able to then get himself to the Cal and kind of start building tanky. And he should be fine as far as the 1v1. The scary thought is obviously just that Vlad is always scaling. Sure, of course. You can see Quas double Doran's ring to have the mana pool to make yep. sure you can keep the push going. Definitely like the choice. You wouldn't normally need to do that, but I think it makes total sense for the matchup. Mm -hmm. We'll see if Quas can make a TP flank or something happen right now as they are pretty close to equal these two. With Vladimir walking back to lane this time around, we're seeing both these players save their teleports. And they know this is kind of the part of the game where you really need to make sure you can get across the map and make these plays happen. A TP advantage this late in the game would definitely get abused. I would really like to see Quas make a play with his TP early this game because it's something that we have been missing in the previous two games. He has not gotten much of anything done with his TP early. Uh, he has not really contributed and he's just been kind of losing lanes. So I, I want to see him actually make use of this this champion early on. And a Maokai TPing at, th at this point in the game, I feel is more impactful than the Vladimir. Uh, before the Vladimir builds up that CDR, before the Vladimir has access to the spell power as well. So uh, while the Vladimir is super, super tanky right now, the amount of damage he's putting out isn't as impactful as Maokai just holding down a carry, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, certainly utility is useful no matter what, yeah. or your farm comes in in any case right now. Right now, though, both bot lanes have yet to buy. They're sitting at about 3,000 gold apiece right now, which means an entire Yomu's for OQ, and it means basically BF pickaxe here for Lot, and a bit more after that. Right now, though, just the pressure. Energy trying to deny that little bit of farm. They are up a couple of CS here. Not a huge amount, really, but... You know, a few from their lane pressure, but it's otherwise trading close to equal. I really do feel like this is in the advantage of Envy, though, if OQ isn't basing, because completing that Ghost Blade, the, the instant that you have that done, yeah, you're, you're at such a massive advantage over this Caitlyn, and the longer the Caitlyn can delay that, the less time she has to deal with this massive discrepancy in power. So I, I think the fact that OQ and Kiwi could haven't actually just like culling, shove this out, based and bought is a mistake. I should correct myself actually. I think it's 3,200 to go to Yomo's. They're not quite at that much money yet. So I have to sort of correct myself that they couldn't have done it yet. And I think that might be the case as soon as they do have that 3,200 gold on the AD carry. OQ has a fan to pop culling and he's got rough with the gold for it. So we might see that happen soon and try to play for Walmart the power spike. Rate, yeah. yeah. We'll see, though. We'll see. I mean, if they just delay, then that's, you know, not the case here. And we'll have to watch what happens. Seraph and Quas once again, in a bit of a battle in the top lane, but they have so much healing back and forth, it's not going to mean too terribly much. The farm, again, slightly in the lead of Seraph. Okay, he's up officially four as the lanes balance out. And once again, Quas doing a fair bit of damage, and actually Seraph starting to lose some HP. Yep, he's in range for the Q. He's probably going to catch up with the move speed, I would imagine. No, has nope. to hit a minion. So Quas running away on time. Yeah, and, and Quas is playing it right. You really do have to play around that bar when you are fighting a Vladimir. It tells you exactly when it's coming up, so there's no excuse to really get chunked out by that. Uh, and that's something that's just a baseline requirement of laying against Vlad. If you let him get the empowered Qs on you consistently, you will lose lane. Yeah, you definitely will, so be careful on this one. Energy being forced a little bit out right now, but Hakpo basically out of mana. He actually can't ult and do anything else. He has just 100 mana right now, but here's the mid lane pressure. The slow end of Neji's trying to claw away, and he will not get knocked up. Nice. The W kept Santorin out of reach, and he got away without burning at him, but now the teleport coming in because the bot lane was already taking some damage, but it's the top lane he's actually going for. Proxen's already up there to take down Quas. The GVM has ulti, but no teleport himself. There we go. Up to the turret they go. Ulti doesn't mean a whole lot, and now Quas zoned away from his tower. He has nowhere to go. He should be taken down. The first blood comes through. Proxen gets it now to the bot side as Santorin joins the fray. But not enough damage to mean anything. A great first blood for Envy. What a teleport play. I think that Quas was probably dead either way, but I really do feel he should have stayed by his turret. Uh, running away from the turret just seals his death. At least there's some hope where if they kind of drop the ball, mess up the dive. The turret right. is at least assisting you long enough that maybe you get out of there alive. Uh, he does hold on to a summoner, so that's something you know, in his favor. But still, uh, I feel like it's, it's assuring your death to move for it. It's 
Centaur does take away the big Krug. Doesn't get the small one. That goes to Lot. Congratulations, Caitlyn. But look at the damage up the top side. Quas now is forced to burn Teleport to get back to the top of the map to defend that turret. It will survive for a little bit longer, but you still got Seraph and Proxy wanting to get stuff done. Seraph healing a big amount. And that turret getting lower and lower, but he really wants to fight this guy. But not to great success. Already down to half HP with Flash down. Sorry, Teleport down. But Envy won't go for the play. So OQ did base there. He actually bought up a full Essence Reaver uh, before changing his mind and going back to the Ghost Blade. So he was considering, hey, I have the full gold for this. Maybe I should just buy it. Besides, better of that. And it's going to pick up the Ruby Crystal, build towards that Black Cleaver. And meanwhile, uh, we do have Quas picking up pieces of a Spirit Visage. But, but Seraph already has a pretty nice item advantage because he didn't invest so heavily into the early game by buying those extra Doran's Rings. Uh, Quas had a base at kind of awkward gold times and now just looking at the item breakpoints, it's a lot better for Seraph. Has a full Spirit Visage, as well as the CDR from the Phoenix Codex on top of it. Yeah, so he's definitely a scary man right now, and hard to get rid of. Absolutely 15 CS, and, well, nearly a turret kill. Blue off. Oh, no! Okay, Ninja gets it. Good job, 62 gold. And plenty of cooldown reduction now on this Lissandra. Mm -hmm. Want to point out real quick for all the Gangplank fans, we are still in 6.10 for this match. This is pre-Trinity Force changes. I'm yeah, curious which... to see what GP would build after that, but... I still I feel has like the crit on it. You probably still want. I think you do too. Just because you want the sheen proc for the barrels. Um, and it's 10 more CDR. It's not like it's terrible. Yep, yeah, it's definitely not bad. Obviously, you prefer the crit, but uh, still fine. This is this is becoming problematic though. You know, we didn't see Santorum focus on top lane early, uh, and now Quas is just at the point where Seraph has enough levels and enough CDR that he's never going to be able to do anything again. It's actually impossible to kill him in the 1v1 at this point. So Seraph is just going to keep pushing it in, keep getting poke on the turret, and they're looking to set up dives, and, and Seraph is going to compound this lead, but here comes the TP from... Yeah, uh, here comes the plays. Ninja wants in. There is the teleport coming in. They're looking... Oh, nice dodge on the root. Quas getting ulted. Ninja's got to be careful. They're losing a lot of health. He's going to flash away, and Quas will survive. Ooh, the barrel was close. They get it shot down. Ninja will survive. A save in the top laner. Yeah. Energy giveaway, no kills, but now Santorin is down here to say, hey, bot lane, we have a Yomus. So G get away. It was Ninja. Didn't Ninja actually just walked up there. He didn't TP. It was yeah. my mistake. I saw him up there. Thought he had TP'd in for the flank, but just didn't make the rotation. And uh, GBM did, thankfully for them, have his TP to, to later answer that. But either way, you know, a, a nice play there from Envy. They do get out the TP from GBM, and Ninja's going to have TP advantage here pretty shortly. And it's energy for the first time all series getting the first Drake, actually. So bot lane, it's going to be the Mountain Drake. It's going to be bonus damage to turrets and epic monsters, such as you know, Drakes and Barons, basically. And this shouldn't be too big of a problem. Their bot lane was starting to win. They got the recall. They got the Yomus. And Envy actually immediately ran away from the lane, covered mid to let a Ninja Roam happen to sacrifice the bot lane. In a quick rotation around, Kiwi Kid joins Santorin, and there we go. Mountain Drake for energy, and if they can keep doing you know reasonably well in this early game, and use that that now Yomu's power spike Lucian, they can start getting some things done. Mm -hmm. I do like the play from Laud and Hakuo to just kind of abandon that lane though, because Seraph has such massive top lane advantage. They don't need to risk dying in a two v two. They don't need to play anything risky in the bot lane. Give that up, it's fine. Seraph is crushing top. Just continue to scale on this Caitlyn. Get towards the late game. That's what they want. See if they can get any more done right here. And then their fire. The cupcake wall doesn't mean too much. And looks like energy gonna survive that attempted assault. 1,000 gold lead over Envy. Largely from that top lane advantage now that Seraph has ballooned over Quas. Quas actually sent down to the other side of the map. With the only really neutral objective up right now being Rift Herald, there's always a chance you can play for it. Mm. And honestly, if Seraph gets that, that'd be even more insane. Pretty surprised to see Ninja Tabby says the pickup for Seraph as well, though. I, I was kind of expecting. Uh, with the ghost, with the insight, to see him go for lucidity, uh, but it's not going to be the case. Yeah, he's actually just is more concerned about being DPS'd out by the Lucian and Gangplank and mm -hmm. saying, you know what, Quas, you're not going to touch me, and I don't care about the CC you have with the root, I'll just W it, so. Yep. Uh, and, and you're right, yeah, not wanting the lucidity either for the cooldowns on the summoners and everything else, so that's his play. It's the tankier build. Let's see what else he can get for himself. Ooh, a nice little knock up there. Proxen wants to fight for the ward, and fights away the Rek'Sai at the very least. That ward, though, does survive, so... Centaur keeps his territory up. A nice barrel chain gets rid of most of the minions, and GBM keeps the turret alive for one more attempt. But that mid lane is uh, taking quite a bit of damage. GBM is also scaling pretty heavily here on this gangplank. Obviously, that's a champion that can be an absolute terror late game as well. 
and always has the potential to win a team fight simply from that great barrel chain that chunks out the mid layer, chunks out, uh, you know, that AD carry. But it's very scary having Seraph just kind of with this free lane right now and just scaling so, so heavily, especially when you take it into consideration that the Caitlyn is probably going to be a lot more effective than Lucian in most laking fights. Totally agree, as long as you can have the uptime there. We had seen before some struggles in the Caitlyn's being able to join the team, especially if they were a really fast forward motion team. You only run so fast, but it, it feels like the ranges that Envy is going to use probably going to include Caitlyn. Certainly true. And there is always the potential of the Maokai and that Rek'Sai jumping on top of this Caitlyn, the GP all getting dropped, etc. That yeah. kind of a, a play can take down Caitlyn pretty quick. So it's always down to the gameplay at the end of it all. Yep. And right now the gameplay has led Envy to a successful early game, 1500 gold lead. They lost the dragon, but I would still take the gold lead if I were them. And especially with how well Seraph's doing right now. GBM wants to defend this. I'm gonna go for the barrel chain. Not really, no. He's gonna leave that one up. Proxen fighting for wards back and forth. Takes down the green ward. Next dragon is quite a bit away. But Baron's only in a minute right now. Either team has actually prioritized Rift Star, I think, at all this series, from what I can remember. So, yeah, we did go. see Proxen take it in game one. Oh, you're right. He did. Because um, I just remember that, that discussion. And Centaur got it in game two, actually, yep. I think. So, I take it back. Rift Star has grabbed both the other games. I just forgot about it. And now, here, here comes, comes another OTPs. teleport play in the top side. Seraph wants to kill off GBM. And look at the damage output. He gets practically the solo kill. A bit of help from Graves. And now, the teleports don't really mean much. Quas comes in, but Ninja just keeps himself afloat with this one. Taking a bit of damage, and here comes the Colin. Caitlyn has killed the turret on the other side of the map, but now it's Ninja trying to get away. A flash and a flash follow. OQ gets the kill. Energy on the board with one. Two to one overall the scoreboard. Keep in mind, mid-outer did drop to Vlad. Overall, I, I say a win for MD, certainly, as it does cost both TPs. Uh, both summers from Quas, both summers from Ninja, but they do get the turret on the end. And, and Centaur and flexing is, uh, sorry, uh, Seraph actually is, is the one who's flexing his muscles now, taking out GBM pretty easily there. And GBM, you know, did get the ult down, did get some damage down, and it was actually a pretty nice play here from Quas as he does come in to keep Ninja in range of the turret, which allowed them to finish it off later on. Uh, GBM kind of realizing he's dead here, trying to get as much done as possible, and in comes Quas, and this is, this is actually really nice. He's able to get in on Ninja and queue him backwards into the turret. These extra turret shots do allow him to finally take him out. Kill goes on to OQ, which is exactly what you want, so not too bad. Yeah, good stuff. And even OQ actually playing it right, not trying to dive too hard into Lissandra to take any extra damage. He didn't like just jump on top of him, get hit by everything, and a shield like Kiba Kid make sure he stayed alive. But theoretically, OQ is under a bit of threat and, and played it right to get away from that one. Ninja, though, not far away from Zonia's Hourglass. It's going to make it even harder to get rid of that Lissandra. The champion he won with on game one was banned away from in game two, and well, gets it again here in the third. Maybe once again. After you get 10 minutes into the game, they're looking pretty solid. They had, you know, that small deficit in game two because they forgot to get the turret kill and Santorin farmed so much, but yeah, it feels like they've just been the better team as soon as you get any summons rotations most of the time. Bright spots for energy though. They do have uh, Oku at that two item power spike. He has his Black Cleaver. He has his Ghost Blade. This is, I think, probably the peak of his power in yeah. comparison to the Caitlyn. Yeah. So that's something that's definitely going for them. GP has you know, more of a hard curve as far as his, his, his power. It just keeps kind of increasing going towards the late game. But I do feel like Energy probably want to try to get something done around this Lucian's power right now because so far they haven't really had a good answer for Seraph. Definitely agree. And it's probably just going to get worse because who's going to actually split push against that guy? You're seeing another Spectre's Cal come out of Colossus. Yeah, and right now it's GBM without any stats. And I don't think he's got a chance in the world of surviving this one. Hemoplague Plague is on, running away, burns the summoner, heals Seraph, nearly gets in. But no, a flash gets him out. Now a big heal out of Seraph, trying to run for dear life and pops a Sanguine Pool. He's going to run out of health right here. The 2v1 going to work out. And good job to OQ taking him out. Looks like they can pull Seraph in far enough that the 2v1 works. Yeah, Seraph goes for the dive. Remember, he has that Storm Raider Surge plus the Ghost, so he was actually going super fast. When he drops the ult plus the Empowered Q, he immediately gets the Storm Raider Surge. He's diving in onto GBM, but GBM able to stay alive long enough with the help of those oranges that OQ can come in and finish him off. Saved by the buoyancy of Citrus there, GBM staying alive long enough. And now, a bit of the waiting game. 15 seconds until the roughly most mar farmed member of Envy is going to respawn. Seeing the attempt, nice pickup. Proxen did get the Rift Scuttle. That goes to the blue team. And it's still a 2,500 gold lead. Even though that kill went through, it doesn't matter. There's more farm, there's more turret kills. 
Envy in the lead, and I think their late game is fine, but, well, GBM hard carried the late game before. He can certainly do it again on this Gangplank. Yeah. Let's see if he can. Envy also has a more diverse kind of damage profile mm -hmm. uh, than we saw uh, energy having last game because they do have graves with some decent physical damage coming out as well So it's even if you do just delete this Caitlyn, there's still graves with physical damage, right? You have to build armor and MR because there's such a diverse kind of damage profile here coming out from Envy Which yeah. is one of the things I really like about their comp and on the other side for energy Do you really care about Maokai's magic damage? No, you just build pure armor. Yeah, I agree and you think about it as well and there's four like real big damage threats graves list Caitlyn Vlad. They're all scary mm -hmm. And even though the only, like, real tank is the Braum, and as a support, he's not that tanky, it's like, well, Seraph's still going to get really big. Ninja is almost impossible to kill. He's got Zonius and the self Bolt. Proxy's going to build half tanky. He's got the fan dance so far. We're probably yeah. going to Sterics come out before too long as well. Like, enemies actually pretty hard to kill for how much damage they deal. Also, with the investment into... Uh, the ninja heavies already and we did see actually even GPM picking up a random in last game It's not out of the question to see a more tanky version of Vladimir Especially with such a physical heavy damage team absolutely because if you can stay alive on Vladimir You can just do so much work uh, just by sticking around drawing pressure. They have to respond to you because You're just never gonna die if you don't put a lot of damage in I agree, and that's going to be difficult as he keeps healing himself up. GBM and Seraph in a 1v1, and just, well, Seraph can kite him out. It's just not too hard for him. Storm Raider Surge is getting him out of those barrels. But once again, here comes OQ getting into the backside. 2v1 on a Seraph. Dashes in, goes for the play. And can they do enough as Seraph is still running, running, running for dear life? And, well, if he pops Ghost, then yeah, he's fine. It's kind of, kind of funny to see that it's, like, the Lucian who's ganking over and over. Right. It's the AD carry sneaking up to the top lane. Going for the ganks, it's not Santorin, who's actually 0 0 0, has not really had any involvement in this game, but he's going yeah. for the steal. Uh, not gonna okay. get that one. Proxen does get the smite, does take it down, and now Santorin's gotta run, get to his tunnels and get away, but Ninja has joined the fray, and they want Quas even through his ultimate. They don't care, they think they can burn down the Maokai. Ulti buys a bit of time from Kiwi Kid, gives him a shield as well, but it's still not gonna be enough. He roots up, but he's still just stuck inside the team, and Hakuho sadly secures the kill. Would like to give it to someone else, but 300 gold to the Braum. Boss was finally taken down, plus the dragon. That's a mountain drake for each. Kind of confused as to why energy actually was sitting around there. Yeah, if you want to have Sandstorm go for the steal, that's great. But GBM is actually hanging out in the bot lane. Obviously, he had no intention of coming. While they're fighting, he's just basing as Sandstorm's going in. So he had right. no intention of TPing into this fight. And that to me, once again, is either some sort of a miscommunication or uh, like an underestimation of, of how much damage Envy can do, because they were committing to this. Seraph was TPing in, but yet Energy's kind of just hanging around in the 4v5 and gives up a free kill as well as a summoner from Quas. Yep, good stuff right now, then, and Envy, you know, capitalizing on misplays, as close as you could say. That's been the story of multiple of their wins here, but, you know, they, they've been able to run with it. They're 4,000 gold up. They've finally equalized that dragon. They even got the same buff, so that's kind of nice. And, well, they've been able to do a lot with Mountain Drake so far, and I think that trend might just continue here. Ninja playing the defensive wave for the game. He's got to be afraid of the fact that OQ and GBM just keep being together. The two Koreans in the lineup, I think kind of unsurprisingly, are playing together on energy. The two that, you know, speak the same mother tongue, and sometimes that's just really relevant when you're trying to coordinate the game. They're going to play for the blue buff right now, though. Ninja doesn't want to give that one up. Neither does Proxen. Neither does Santor. They're going to go for that one. Wow, there's the explosion and the attempt at a dive. Seraph in the front lines, pops the ulti, kites around, taking a lot of culling damage, and... Now Sangun pulls under the root. How much damage can Akuho block, though? His ulti's still down, and Santor is stuck in the front line. Ults it up, Ninja buying some time, and there's the first kill. Quas goes down as the magic of his tank just gets shredded by lots of physical damage. Proxens as well, and now it's time for the chase. Five versus four. They're all on the map, they're all running forward, and now GBM pops the ulti to buy some time. Hakuho ignited, and he will go down. The true damage stacking up the smite from Santor, and even helping with that one. Kiwi Kid getting himself a kill, his first of the game, and only three for the team. A nice turnaround at the end from energy, but it was a great play from Ninja that really kind of broke up this fight. This is something I, I like. Oh, they're going to go for a kill here onto Sarah. Well, Sarah pushing really hard on the top lane. He's got nowhere to go with this one. He's going to try to get the Q. Not going to be coming up in time. OQ on a killing spree. 3-0 zero and 0-0 zero from him. Good stuff. Over extension. Yeah, good stuff from uh, energy to punish that, though. Um, but we do see... Uh, Energy is at least trying to make plays, right? This is something that they did not do in the first game. Uh, they are losing this game. I like that they went for it. It didn't 
at, at first did not turn out so well for them, but they're trying, right? This is what you have to do. You cannot just roll over and die and give up turret after turret, objective after objective. So Energy are fighting tooth and nail. Uh, they're staying in this game because they're looking for fights. They're trying to make stuff happen, and it's working out pretty well. Picking up two kills on the back of that is, is not too bad. Unfortunately, I think they did give up the mid lane inner. Uh, yeah, mid lane tier two is gone. So you're seeing that, you know, it's kind of it's kind of the play. It's it's a lot of what I would consider Seraph a bit known for is he's gonna push really really hard and he's gonna pull three people to his lane. You better push the other lanes while he's doing that, and it worked out in this case. So here is the play once again, and uh, we do have that ward drop. Quas is gonna be TPing in, and Seraph is just drawing so much of this damage, taking so long to kill, and and here goes Ninja. Ninja gonna go uh, back into that back line, and really nice self ultimate there. Gets three man W, three man self fault and chunks out the back line, forces energy to retreat. Yeah, Seraph played it right as well, juggling the cooldowns. When he pops Zonius, he's already charging up for that empowered yeah. Q so that when he comes back out, well, he's gonna heal again, and he's still not gonna go down. And you saw that he survived the entire fight. Four to four in kills right now, 5,000 gold lead, nearly the advantage for Envy. As they have to be afraid of Quas's attempt to flank, his flash is not far from being back up, and they're gonna go for the dive right now onto the mid lane. Hako puts up the shield, tries to run away. Seraph actually buying the time and saying, Quas, you can't go past me, and he says, you're right, I cannot but they can still TV. go past the mid lane. Plenty of damage coming out, and here's the teleport in from Lissandra. Ninja wants in, and that's gonna be OQ for certain. They don't need to ult him. Turret does go down, but it's a 5v4 with a big health lead. A lot more can be done for Envy. Baron stuff as well, and at this stage in the game, 40 seconds on your AD means a lot. Uh, will Envy actually uh, take the risk to go over towards Baron? Yeah, it looks like they're considering it, but keep in mind Santorin has been generally better at spending the Proxen. Prox has had a few more good spikes this game. He secured the dragon. He secured yep. the blue buff in that prior replay. So he's seeing some elements of this, but oh geez, GBM's got to be careful. I wouldn't even be surprised if Ninja had gone for that one actually and looked for the kill on the gangplank, but instead it was the play for the bot lane turret. Oki respawns in six seconds, and that's going to be the end of this one as a great set of wave comes out of GBM. The turret will take no more damage. Envy has been doing a really good job playing around GBM's barrels, though. He's not really been able to have any impactful barrel chains that I can remember this game. Yeah, he's not he's like single-handedly with the fights. Yeah, he, he's just not able to, to nail them. And yes, he is clearing out the waves. Yes, he is scaling. But Envy's doing a great job not only avoiding the barrel chains, uh, but actually killing them off very, very quickly, yeah. uh, which is super frustrating for gangplank players, and especially you know with the, the last round of nerfs where you actually do have less barrels to work with. If you do kill one or two off, all of a sudden you don't even have access to a barrel chain. Yeah, and any sort of extended sequence that's long enough, you'll eventually spawn more because of the yep. cooldown, but yeah, you don't stack, you don't have as many waiting when you first get to a lane. That's kind of the difference here. Plus, you're a glass cannon mid laner, right? It's not like you could just charge in there and start milling their AD carry yeah. once your barrels get killed off. You have to play it slow. You have to play it very carefully. And so much of that is about landing those those money barrel chains. And right now, he hasn't gotten too many of them that weren't just on the general minion farm. Vlad with the Hurricane and the Caitlyn Rapid Fire Cannon in as well. And the Zerker Greaves, he has got plenty of attack speeds, plenty of damage output. That is an online Caitlyn build. We'll see if he goes well. Anything else. Yeah. Up that IE. That's a huge buy for GBM, and this is kind of a massive power spike for him. It'll be interesting to see if he goes, you know, for a Ma or something uh, to try to one v one against, you know, Seraph and Ninja better on later, because he's probably the one that has to. Let's see if they are able to answer this one. Because right now it's just Envy with what seems like all the questions and energy are just kind of hemming and hawing and not knowing how to quite answer everything here. Six thousand health on Baron Nasher. It's Envy looking for the play, then backing it when he relents it. Energy are aware of this one. Wards cleared back and forth, and Envy just back out, not wanting to go for that play. Ocean Drake has spawned now in the bot side. And honestly, with how much actual siege gameplay we're going for, I mean, I always love Infernal Drakes, but it actually would come into some decent use here when you're seeing culling and barrel chains come out. This would help Envy quite a bit, I feel. Yeah, I think that Ocean Drake is actually quite useful, especially even just for the mana. You see guys like Graves are actually booming quite a lot. Yeah, definitely the case. Yeah, you're right, the mana is actually a sort of underrated part of this one, but there we go. Prox is going to have many fewer mana woes. Seraph almost won't care. He's topped off almost all, almost all the time. Seraph's never going to run out of mana either, Freak. No, he's not. Uh, before blue buff gave um, ability power, there were times where blue buff literally meant nothing on you if you were max CDR. Yeah. It, you could have worn it or not, and it meant nothing. But this time around, Seraph would care regardless, fighting Quas once more. And look at that top lane, dude, going down. So. 
Props to GBM for some good split push game. Yes, that was because Envy wanted to play for the Dragon. At this point, I would probably trade a Dragon for a top lane out of turret. That's okay in my book, but it does mean that energy are clawing back in. Four and a half thousand, the deficit, not the worst in the world. Honestly, it was probably worse than this last time around, so energy have come back from worse, certainly. A lot worse. They were down 11k at, what was it, 37 38, minutes, 38 yeah. minutes, so they're definitely hanging in there quite a lot better. And they weren't in position to challenge the dragon, so GBM getting the best out of the bad situation. He's going to be able to pick up that turret, uh, collect some of the standing gold that was sitting out around the map, and he's getting he's getting very strong. He does pick up the hex drinker, as I suspected. He has to answer against Seraph, and Seraph actually is going Randuin's, as we had had talked about earlier. Not a big surprise to me, especially him kind of showing his hand on how tanky he really wants to go with. Two of his three first items, you know, Warmog, Spirit Visage, and he already had Tabbies. Yep. I think it's really smart. He's going to do less damage, yes, but he's going to be so disruptive, so annoying. And he can just kind of Rambo into the back line. Boss can't peel him. They have no magic damage that's going to be a threat for him. Yep. So he can just basically ignore OQ and GBM. He's got both more health and more armor than Quas right now. <laughs> he is very hard to deal with. And he's still got 170 ability power from all yeah. the conversions and whatnot. He's going to be probably okay here in this one. It doesn't mean, though, he doesn't have any magic resist. And Quas has a percent health damage W. He's getting something done. And then you see that happen, and Seraph gets half the missing health bar back. So trading back and forth. Quas literally just didn't lose health here. Seraph actually had to give him some respect. So maybe at some point he has to deal with that. And Visage maybe isn't enough to ignore Quas. I think for the most part, Although Quas may be able to compete with him by his turret, I don't think he's ever actually going to be able to have enough damage to finish him off. And eventually, you know, Seraph's just going to go back and full. He can't actually straight up just kill Quas because he's just building armor. Um, but he can kind of just stay around and still wave clear. And and yeah, Quas Quas is being annoying, but I just can't see the Maokai ever actually being able to really kill him. And Seraph actually walks up, takes turret shots, and says, "I'm going to kill his turret eventually. I've got a I've got a mountain Drake. We're good." Quas knows it. There, yeah. There's, there's nothing he can really do. He he. He fought as long as he could there, uh, but there's nothing to really push the yeah. Vladimir back long term. You yeah. can push him back for a wave, you can push him back for 10 seconds maximum, then that Warmogs is active and he's back to full. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So, difficult roads all ahead. He's in the struggles now. Santorin eating a cupcake and losing a lot of oh health. He took forever to get out there. Just drops down. That lasted longer than I expected, but maybe he just hit another trap after the cooldown period came through, and he's just gone. So there's no spite up now for energy, and that could just be a game-losing play because Envy are on the Baron right now. 7,000 health dropping lower and lower, and they should be staying around, but Law nearly gets destroyed. GBM needs a barrel chain. He's got to try to steal this. Uh, it's try too late. It. He's not going to get it at all. That drop down fast enough. Mountain Drake certainly helping a little bit, and now they can run away, lick their wounds, and... Empowered Recall with an 8,000 gold lead. Envy got to feel real good about closing the series out. Yeah, Santorin died for free. Uh, didn't even blow his flash. You know, he thought he could still tunnel out, but took the damage on that travel time that actually finished him off. It may have gone down anyway, but to lose your jungler for free like that, 35 minutes into the game is almost a guaranteed Baron when you're already at an advantageous position. And yeah. GBM was not there fast enough. Uh, I feel like he needed to maybe TP in, just do something. They, they need to try something to stop that because... That's absolutely huge. Yeah, I agree. And GBM actually, I'm a little bit surprised is even picking up blue buffs because he's got an Essence Reaver and a Max CDR already. Yeah. So I'm not sure what he's really gaining out of that since he's probably got mana regardless. Uh, and just like, hey, give it to OQ. Give him Max CDR. Give him, you know, that extra mana since he's not running Essence Reaver. I don't know, maybe some small optimizations there. Not really a game losing mistake in either case. That was probably Santorin's doing, getting picked off right before Baron. And now it's up to the Siege gameplay. The ocean regen, the mountain damage output, the Baron buff for the minions. And he's certainly well in control. And the Baron buff will last until Dragon respawns. So they're going to go for this in the top side of the map right there. It would be Elder Dragon when it comes through. But that top lane turret taking a lot of punishment. Shield comes in from Kiwi Kid to buy a few more seconds, but it's still going to drop down. Now comes the team fight. Hako ults to disengage. Then toward to the backside has to run right back away. Look at the damage coming in a lot. He will not be killed. And Prox on the rampage as he's taken down Quas already. Ulti coming across. Looking to pop down. Kiwi Kid blocked though by Santorin. And now it's Seraph in the backside. He is invincible to damage. Hey, take it back. He's taking a lot of pain. But oh. survives. Heals back up even through the Grievous wounds. Staying up in this one. A 1 for 0. Top inhibitor already open. That's going to be taken down by Envy. Yeah, just barely staying alive there as Seraph. And now they can just go right over. Over to mid lane. They can Baron buff up those minions as well and probably take this. Quas is down and he was just getting completely ignored by Seraph, who once again did so much work in that fight. Diving deep onto the back line, pushing them off. This has got to be two and hibs for Envy. Almost definitely. If they choose to stay, Quas though back up in 15 seconds and Envy actually choosing discretion is the better part of Valor. Realizing their bot lane actually quite low on health. 
and they're like, you know what? We don't want to be part of this one anymore. We got plenty of money from that one. Take the red buff, take the recall. We'll peace out for now. Play for Elder Dragon maybe in a bit. We still got a minute to work with this Baron buff. At, at this point, I just feel like you cannot punch through the front line of Envy. And look at how this starts off. Boss is just like, what do I even do? As a Maokai, you can't kill Baron minions. You can't kill the Vladimir. He's just getting ignored, and you got to feel bad for the guy. And, and look at how tanky Hawkwo is. This is a full culling tanking up into him. This is a Braum that is basically taking no damage because he has a Frozen Heart and a Randuin's now complete on top of that. It's just disgusting how tanky they are. They're able to get into the back line and just effectively ignore them, which is allowing so much free time for Proxim, for Ninja, and for Laud to get their damage done because Seraph and Hakuo cannot be ignored, but energy just doesn't have the damage to kill them. They really don't. And it's like, it's on GBM as the only real late game yeah. Like, okay, yes, Janna could theoretically buff up OQ, but OQ's yeah. got 20% crit chance and no attack that is out of Yomi. He just doesn't have the DPS, and Proxen, though, does get cut off. That is one thing they do have is the burst damage. That comes through. Hakuho ults to buy some time, but be careful, Santorin. There is everyone else coming for you right now. Ninja looks for the damage, flashes in, looks for a bunch oh, of that pain, ult from and Ninja. just deletes half of the lineup already. A double kill coming out a lot. The snipe comes in, can't quite kill off Santorin, but it's two for one, despite the early pick, Advantage Envy. Yeah, and GBM's on the wrong side of the map. I think it's about to be three for one is he's likely going to get chased down, but uh, they have bigger things on their mind. They're just going to have Seraph chase him down, and they're going to have Ninja and Laud go straight for the second inhibitor. GBM trying to TP out. And there's no turret to go for anyway, so now this squad has to regroup and see what they can save. Seraph has no one to kill. He's stuck in the wrong side of the map. It's like three versus three, actually. And so they run away before anything else can happen. Seraph not part of the crew. But now it's two inhibitors down. That Elder Dragon's on the map whenever they want it. And they start it now. Yeah. And it's it's really hard to see a way that energy claws their way back into this game simply because of the damage profile of their team. It's almost all physical. So much armor is built up on the other team now. You look at Seraph. He has Zonia's armor. He has Randuin's. He has Ninja Tabbies. And I don't know if that's a Dead Man's or what he's building with that last. It probably is uh, with that giant spell. It could be a Rylize as well, obviously. Um, but yeah. either way, you can't get through the Braum. You can't get through Seraph. And the backline damage is now massive. It really is scary. We can watch that play again. It was a nice first pick off in a proxy, even with the barrel. Yep. Yeah, really good barrel chain there from GBM plus the all. They're able to pop and kill Proxim really, really quickly. Another good barrel chain actually chunking out Ninja, but watch that all. That is so much damage on all three members. OQ is at like 5% HP off that. He has to run away, and Ninja won that fight with a beautiful claw in Flash W ultimate. Really yeah, good if, stuff. Exactly. If Lod could have seen OQ, OQ is dead. He nearly killed Santorin with the ulti anyway. Yep. And it meant, well, Elder Dragon picked up, and it's going to be on for another minute and maybe 15 seconds right here. And they can do plenty with that. And as soon as they're done pushing with Elder Dragon, well, Baron's back up. And Envy can just keep cycling the map and just taking everything off of it. Here's some jungle camps to kill. 1,000 damage crits, no big deal. Yeah. Thanks very much. 100 gold to Laud. You know what's making me really sad, though, is that there's no Executioner's Calling. There's no Last Whisper item at all on OQ. At 40 minutes into the game against a Vladimir yeah, he got and a Scimitar Braum with, with a ton of armor. And I just think that sitting on the QSS and picking up uh, that Executioner's Calling and the Last Whisper item is just so much better than the build that he has right now. Totally There's just agree. almost no way he can deal with this. And not only does it cut the Vladimir's health regen massively down, but you're actually punching through that armor and able yeah. to do some impactful damage. At least he has the cleaver to help everyone else out with this yeah. one, but even but I mean, after it's, it's that... flat armor pen, which when they have hundreds of armor... Well, cleaver's a percentage shred. It's the Yomas oh, that's okay. flat, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, he's giving some aspect. Now, I completely agree, like, Executioners should be in that build, 100%. At the very least, that. Maybe not Mortal Reminder, but he's still missing out on that 800 gold piece that everyone should have against the Vladimir team. And now, here comes the play on the top side. Seraph just taking up forever. He just kind of can ignore most of this. Goes back in the single pool, looking for someone else to kill. And here's the Empowered Q. And hey, he's got a bit of a debuff, but who re even cares in this one? Again, popping the Zonia's, looking to kite away. Still just not going down. Can ignore everything else. The bottom inhibitor goes down. That's all three inhibs gone. That's Envy looking to close out the series. There's the snipe. There's the kill off on Quas, who couldn't even flash away. He died too fast. A nice barrel chain buys some time. Proxen's low, but doesn't even matter. It's a 5v4. The push is in. They're looking to close this one out. It's a long series. It took over two hours of gameplay to make it happen, but this should be Envy closing it out unless a miracle comes through. Santorin forced to run away, nearly dead, just barely survives it, but there's all the turrets. All the buildings are gone. Now it's time for the game-winning push. Proxen's dead, but the Nexus is gone as well, and Envy are going to be in first place after their first match. Good stuff from Envy. They close it out. They had a good team comp. They played to their win conditions. 
I love the build from Zerif. Really, really smart, I have to say. Uh, he knew what he needed to get done. He didn't need to do the damage. Allow the backline to do that job. Tank it up, be disruptive. In there with Hakuo. Fantastic stuff from Envy. And you gotta say, Energy just kind of looked outclassed in this series. They really did. You were seeing elements that were fine. OQ and Kiwi Kid, one lane a little bit, but hey, they were fall solid as a 2-1-2. GBM, great mid laner, did fine for himself. Santorin kind of routinely outfarmed Proxen in, in, yeah. in a number of these games, at least, you know, game two especially, but it felt like between minute eight and minute 37, Envy was significantly the better team. And to me, that's actually the most important part of the game. Because, yeah. look, laning phase is you playing ranked games regularly and just learning how to play League of Legends. And that, that's not hard to get close up to par. But the fact that they were constantly making better rotations, better ganks, the coordination was there, that's props to Envy. That's good on them for, for having that cohesion and making those plays happen. Yeah, and energy on the other side of things, they did pick up that one win on the back of kind of a Herculean effort from, uh, from GBM, who was right. absolutely massive on Vladimir the previous game. But this time around, he could not replicate the magic on Gangplank. He got shut down. He was able to get some good barrel chains, but for the most part, his barrels were getting picked off. They were being avoided. And he has a Vladimir just running straight at him, and he wasn't even able to have the chance to do it. That's kind of the case is, you know, they won when GBM hard carried. Yep. That's, that's, kind of the story of energy all year and a little bit of this where you didn't feel like there was a lot going for that team in the earlier split i don't think there's any dead weight in this roster really like i, I think you don't have these sort of moon like experiences where he just he just never got it going in the lcs yeah. just yet uh but even still it's like you just have an uncoordinated team of good players where you're I, not making any plays i will say i actually think that energy's best game was the last game as far as team effort i think that the players actually played pretty well uh, I really think that a lot of it came down to the team composition. They just did not have a diverse damage profile. They didn't have yeah. the ability to actually kill these people once they stacked armor. And I think that was really one of their downfalls, as well as not having Executioner's Culling. They just didn't really have any ways to deal with this Vladimir. You know, there's not enough actual CC to stop him from pooling. They don't have, you know, silence. They're not picking a Soraka into it to, like, try to silence him or do something. You know, there has to be some answer to him and they really built no answer into their team composition. And, and the last game, I actually felt like energy played pretty well, but their draft, I think, fell short pretty hard for me. Yeah, I like their drafts in the first few games. Like, yeah. we saw what their what their team comp could do at the end of game two. I, I again, still thought their comp was great in game one. They had to lose early yeah. game to not lose it, and that is what happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, massive props to Envy for what they did. But, yeah, even though Energy looked good in game three and GBM had a pretty good performance, it doesn't matter. Envy was much better as a team. Loved their coordination, loved their play. Super aggressive. Massive props to Sarah from the top end as well. And so now...